On February 19, 1945, the 4th and 5th Marine Divisions began landing on the island of Iwo Jima. They began landing along this beach right here. 2nd Battalion, 28th Regiment of the 5th Marine Division landed along this stretch of beach right here called Green Beach. Their objective was to cut across the island, cut the head of the island off, and then take Mount Suribachi right here. After five days of hard fighting, they finally made it to the top of Mount Suribachi on February 23, 1945. Members of the 2nd Battalion, 28th Regiment of the 5th Marine Division raised an American flag on top of Mount Suribachi. And this is the photo of that flag raising. Upon raising the flag, cheering from military personnel at the base of Mount Suribachi erupted when they saw this American flag flying atop the hill. As the cheering occurred, the secretary of the U.S. Navy, James Forrestal, in this picture, was on the island. He was so taken by the jubilation, he decided he wanted that flag. When word reached 2nd Battalion Commander Chandler Johnson, this guy here, he said, to hell with that. He said that flag belonged to the 2nd Battalion, and he sent someone to find a bigger replacement flag. When that flag made it up here, to the top of Suribachi, they tied it to a heavy pipe and raised it when the first flag was lowered. This was a photo taken of that event. The first flag came down right here as the second flag went up. Marine Corps cameraman Bill Gnaust got film footage of the second flag raising, and this is what he filmed. Standing to the right of Gnaust was Joe Rosenthal, this guy here. He just pointed his camera in the direction without looking through the viewfinder when someone said the flag was going up. He wasn't even sure if he got the shot. After the flag was up, Joe Rosenthal posed the men for this photo right here. And in this photo you can see Joe Rosenthal standing right here, getting the picture of that posed photo. And to his left is Bill Janaust with his movie camera. When his film roll was full, he sent it off for processing. It made its way through the military channels and ended up here on the island of Guam, about 600 miles to the south. It was processed on the island of Guam, and then the photo was radio photoed to the Associated Press headquarters in New York. On the morning of Sunday, February 25th, millions of Americans saw the photo for the first time on the front pages of every newspaper. And back on Iwo Jima, On February 28th, 2nd Battalion, 28th Regiment of the 5th Marine Division, basically the boys who raised the flag, began heading north up through here on the west side of Iwo Jima, right in here. On March 1st, Mike Strank, this guy here, was killed. He was 25 years old. At that point, they were approximately right in here on March 1st. Mike Strank and his men came under fire from a plateau, which I believe is this plateau in this area here, and he took cover in a cove that was protected on three sides, kind of like this here. This might be the cove, but I can't confirm that. It was protected on three sides and open to the ocean, which this cove here, and maybe this cove up here, fit that description perfectly. And while he was in that little cove, a U.S. Navy ship fired a shell in, accidentally killing Mike Strank and wounding several of his men. Shortly before his death, two other Marines would later say that Mike Strank was making comments to them, highly suggesting that he knew he was going to die soon. So Mike Strank most likely was killed somewhere in this general area right in here. After Mike's death, 
This guy here, Harlan Block, became the leader of the group. However, Harlan Block was also killed just before evening of the same day. Harlan was 20 years old. Also killed on March 1st was this guy. His name was Hank Hansen. He was 25 years old. All three of the men most likely were killed in this area, but it's also possible that Harlan Block could have been killed somewhere up in this area. By March 21st, the men who were left of 2nd Battalion, 28th Regiment, made it up into this area, and the battle was winding down. And for some reason, Franklin Sosley, this guy here, stood up and began walking down a road. I don't know what road it is, but it was probably a road somewhere in this general area right here. As he was walking down the road, a sniper shot him through the back, and Franklin Sosley would die where he fell. He was 19 years old. On March 30th, President Roosevelt sent out an order to immediately transfer back to the U.S. the six men raising the flag on Mount Suribachi in the photo. They were wanted for a bond tour to raise money for the war effort. Joe Rosenthal eventually made it to Guam. When they asked him if he posed the picture, he said yes, because he thought they were asking him about this picture right here. Then they showed him the picture that they were actually talking about. It was the first time Rosenthal had seen the photo. He never knew he got that photo until he saw it. Then he said no, he did not pose this particular photo. Now initially, the men in the photo were recognized here as right here at the back was Ira Hayes. Directly in front of him was Franklin Sosley. The opposite side of Franklin Sosley over here was Mike Strank. In front of Franklin Sosley was Navy Corpsman John Bradley. Opposite side of John Bradley was Rainey Gagnon. And here putting the pole in the ground was Hank Hansen. When Roosevelt demanded the six men be sent back to the U.S., what he did not know is that Hank Hansen, Franklin Sosley, and Mike Strank had all been killed on the island. The three survivors were Ira Hayes, John Bradley, and Rainey Gagnon. When the three survivors were getting ready for the bond tour, they were shown the photo with the names in place. Immediately, Ira Hayes said it was not Hank Hansen in the photo at the base of the pole. It was actually this guy here, Harlan Block. Ira was told to be quiet because everyone had been identified. After the war was over, in May of 1946, Ira Hayes hitchhiked from Pima, Arizona on the Indian Reservation to West Laco, Texas down here. He told Harlan's dad, Ed Block, that it was Harlan in the photo and not Hank Hansen. Harlan's mom wrote their congressman. And on January 15, 1947, Marine Corps Commandant Alexander Vandegrift confirmed it was Harlan Block after listening to everything Ira Hayes had to say. For many years, it was believed now that this was Harlan Block, this was John Bradley. Rainey Gagnon was over on the opposite side of John Bradley. Franklin Sosley was standing here. Mike Strank on the other side of him. And Ira Hayes at the back. After the war, Ira Hayes had a severe case of PTSD and used alcohol to cope with it. He was arrested several times. And on January 24th, 1955, one month short of the 10th anniversary of the flag raising, Ira Hayes was found dead, face down in a pool of his own vomit and blood near an abandoned hut about 100 yards from his home. He was 32 years old. On October 12th, 1975, Rainy Gagnon suffered a fatal heart attack in the boiler room of the Colonial Village apartment complex where he was the head of maintenance. He was 54 years old. John Bradley had a stroke. He was surrounded by his wife and children in his last moments. His labored breathing suggested he was trying to hang on, so his wife Betty whispered in his ear, It's all right if you leave us when you're ready. It's all right, Jack. And at 2.12 a.m. on January 11th, 1993, Jack Bradley took his last breath. He was 70 years old. In June 2016, it was confirmed that Harold Schultz was actually in the position of Franklin Sosley, and Franklin Sosley was actually in the place of John Bradley. It turned out that John Bradley was actually never in the photo. And in October of 2019, it was confirmed that this guy here, Harold Keller, was actually in Rainy Gagnon's place, and Rainy Gagnon was helping lower the first flag as the second flag was being lifted. Harold Keller died March 13th, 
1979, in Grinnell, Iowa, at the age of 57. Harold Schultz died May 16, 1975, in Los Angeles, California. He was 70 years old. Today, the official names on the photo, Ira Hayes, right back here, Harold Schultz, standing right here, Franklin Sosley, standing here, Harlan Block, at the base of the pole, on the opposite side of Franklin Sosley is Harold Keller, and Mike Strank is still in the same position on the opposite side of Harold Schultz. So there you have it. A little bit of the history of the most famous Marine Corps picture ever taken, right here on the Forrest Haggerty Channel.